Abdet and Ron, the pastor of Houston International Church, right here in lovely Houston, Texas. Now, we have been spending some time in the book of Revelation. And here in, in Revelation chapter 12, in the fourth vision, we are told that uh, there is a land beast and that there is a sea beast who represents nations or who represents um, institutions, who will, human beings in a corporate manner, who will cooperate with the devil to attack the people of God. The people of God, of course, will have to always be in the whole armor of God. To, to wrestle against God. And sometimes this attack will, will bring untold suffering, pain, and even death as, as the devil makes his move. But we are told that behind all of this is someone called the devil and Satan. You know, for those of you who want to know more, M Mervyn Maxwell in his book, God Cares, which you can get on Amazon, or you can easily access it. If you Google it, you'll find some way in which you can buy a copy make it simple for us, for everyone to understand who the, 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 the sea beast is and who the land beast is. And then there's a woman in there where it represents a church, the pure, in its purity, that started when Jesus Christ came and gave the gospel to be taken to the entire world. That the dragon who cannot get hold of Jesus Christ, who have ascended to heaven, will attack those persons who have decided to become his followers. That's what the, the fifth vision is all about. And then the sixth vision, the big, uh, the big, so, so, so the, the purpose of the fifth vision, before I move away from it, is to tell us that there is a power behind all the pain and suffering that is going on. There's a principalities that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a power behind everything. And that's the old serpent called the devil and Satan. And then the sixth vision, uh, 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 the, the fifth vision rather, is, a, is about the, the, the seven last plagues that will happen at the end of time. That is going to flood all across untold suffering. COVID is one. COVID could be one of the plagues. We don't know. We are not very clear as to what form the plagues will take exactly or literally. But something, but because of the global nature of COVID and its, its pervasive nature and its destructive nature, it is possible that it could be one of the plague. God tells us that something will afflict the entire world and we should never say that God has abandoned his planet because he told us ahead of time that this would happen. We need to have faith. And then the, 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 the sixth vision is about the destruction of Satan and the land beast and the sea beast. And sin and sinners and suffering and pain and death and all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. God is saying that everything will finally one day come to an end when I come. And then the final vision, the seventh vision, in Re started in Revelation chapter 21, where God tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We're talking about Revelation and the seven messages that are in the seven big messages that are in the book of Revelation, if you will read it. If you will read it. You know, I, 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 the beautiful thing about Revelation is that every vision ends in victory. Every single one of them. The first vision, we find it ending in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21, where God says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If it, that's, the, that's the message of the Laodicean church, the last day church. There'll be those who will open the door and let him in. And they'll be saved. And there'll be those who will not. And they'll be lost. Those who open the door will end in victory. And then the second vision ends at Revelation 8 verse 1 where there's silence in heaven for half an hour. Where God and the angels and the Holy Spirit and all of them will leave heaven and come down here to earth. And they'll spend half an hour journeying to earth to collect his children and taking them back in heaven. The Bible tells us that a day in prophecy rep represents a year. So half an hour represents one week. Mervyn Maxwell book, God Cares by Mervyn Maxwell, volume two about Revelation will explain it simpler for you if you get a copy and read it. And then the third vision ends in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, where it says the kingdoms of this world 
have become the kingdoms of the Lord and His Christ. Every nation, your nation and mine, where I live, United States or wherever we are from, all nation one day will come under the rulership of Almighty God. And here the prophecy tells us when it will happen. The fourth vision ends at Revelation 14, 14, where there's a white cloud. He said, behold, he cometh with clouds. God is coming in heaven. And then the fifth vision ends at Revelation 16, verse 17, where it says, it is done. Today, Christ is in heaven as our high priest interceding in the heavenly sanctuary. But one day he will get up and take off his priestly robe, put on his robe for war, declare it is done, sin is done, suffering is done, death is done, all of this is done. I'm coming. It ends in victory. And then the sixth vision, we see Jesus in Revelation 20 and verse 11 on a white horse. He's coming, a symbol of victory. Again, he's coming. And then the seventh vision begins at Revelation 21, 1 to 5, where God says that, listen, I, I, I am creating, let me read it for you. Here in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 5, we hear the word of God says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice of the throne saying, Now the dwelling place of God is with men, and God will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. It ends in victory. There are seven big messages in the book of Revelation. The message to the church, the spiritual condition of the church. God said, I'm aware, and it ends in victory. The, 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 the historical journey of the church, the seven seals. God said, I know what's going on. The political journey of the church, where nations move against the church, the seven trumpets. God said, listen, I am aware of the policies. And then we, 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 we have the, 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 behind it all, the fourth vision is Satan attacking the church using these pagan nations and, and, and institutions, using what he can to destroy the work of God. And then we have the seven plagues as God gets ready to wrap up time. And then he comes and he destroys the beast, the dragon, the land bees, the sea bees, sin and death, and, every, and even the false woman, which represents a false church. All of that is over. And then we have the seventh vision, where it's just about victory. It's a, read Revelation again. You decide where you spend your time again, where you spend your eyes and your ears, what you listen to. Turn off the television. Break away from negativity and negative people. And open the word and let Jesus speak to you again. And you'll find that you have a bright future. You'll be hopeful, you'll be joyful, you will be peaceful. If you don't know him, all you have to say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me and come into my heart. You say that and you mean it, you're forgiven. He enters your heart. And you find a Bible believing church and you get baptized and you live a life in obedience to his word and heaven is yours. Or if you're walking with it and you are not spending time in the word, you're going to find yourself getting a little more toxic. Turn off the television. Turn off the negativity. Pick up the word and build your faith and trust in God again. Meet him afresh in the book of Revelation. And here is seven messages all over again. And realize that a bright destiny, a bright future await us all. Why don't you pray with me? Father God in heaven, thank you for Revelation. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the keys and the different perspectives as we strive to understand your word. Lord, keep us faithful until then. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm Denton Rowan signing off here from wonderful Houston um, in the United States. And I hope to see you next week.